Oscar reading Cyber Dogs and Citizens of the Interbubs. This is Ren Scrooge McDog coming at you in another episode of Modern Minecraft from the Fullcraft 3 server. What is happening, everybody? How you all doing out there? Oh man, this face. What a ridiculous look. I don't think I'm ever going to be able to look more ridiculous in Minecraft ever again if I tried. I love it so much. Anyway, welcome back. How are you guys doing out there, man? You in the mood for some modern Minecraft? Oh, baby. Look how awesome Big Cheese Power is looking behind us. Doesn't it look amazing? Never in my wildest imagination did I think that this power plant was going to look like this, guys. It is turning out so beautifully. Look at all of that jazz back there. By the way, last episode, we picked up this Scrooge McDuck bauble from our chest when we were collecting our cash monies. It's from the government. <laughs> I've been trying to figure out exactly what it means, and I think I cracked the nut on it. We are currently the richest fool in full craft, which means I guess we get the Scrooge McDuck bauble. And I'm going to quite conveniently use the Scrooge McDuck bauble for our pettage today, because I think the rule of the government is still that we have to have a pet and we have to look after it. Um, I am actually pre-recording this episode because, as we speak, I am in Sweden at DreamHack 2018. So this is a little bit of a pre-recorded episode, uh, so I don't know if the rules of the government have changed or something. Uh, however, I think we'll hang on to old Scrooge McDuckles over here. I think he's a pretty awesome pet to look after where can we put him can we put him on top of this table oh we can put him on top of the engineer's workbench right in the middle of the blueprint it looks like he's got a little blanket or something over there oh that is absolutely gorgeous <laughs> hi scrooge mcduck that is awesome uh, anyway so for this episode my dudes oh baby we are going to be working on some technical jams together now i realize since we were last together quite a lot has changed around here i've been working off camera quite a lot um probably about six hours or so since we were last together and I've just been working to get our grilled cheese power plant to a point where everything is kind of working. Most of the stuff I've had to do here has been very tedious cable pulling and trying to figure out the logistics of how all the, the power systems work and stuff. But essentially, we are now at the point when we can start setting up the grilled cheese factory here. And uh, that's what we're going to be doing together today. It is going to be sweet, man. Last episode, we set up a brand new way of making wheat and seeds, didn't we? Using these awesome garden cloche thingies and uh, we got some potatoes growing here too the potatoes are being turned into ethanol inside of the uh, fermenter over there and the seeds are being turned into uh, plant oil which is being stored up there and then used in the uh this thing the what is this thing called again the i can't even remember the distillery or something I, I can't really remember however we need to put that on pause because we just got the freaking diamond loyalty badge oh that is amazing that is 100 hours of playtime on the full craft 3 server oh baby let's wear that with pride look at that oh man that is looking super spice tastic uh, also can I figure out exactly what this thing is called just for my mind oh it's the refinery that's what it's for. So, refinery is getting plant juice and ethanol from this particular plant, which we set up last time. I just installed all of the other garden cloches, got them all fired up with the power and whatnot. Looks really sweet, right? Really neat, man. These immersive engineering power systems. So freaking epic. Uh, I've also made a bit of a power pylon over here, which I think looks really, really cool. Super steampunk. And that's uh, getting some power, of course, from the diesel generator array there. And this power is coming in to our latest facility, which is slowly but surely becoming the grilled cheese dis uh, factory part of the big cheese power facility. <laughs> It's getting pretty complicated. Uh, you know what? It is actually getting to the point where it's so complicated. I think we need to take a pause together and go through exactly what is going on around here. Just so that we're all on the same page. Uh, mostly so that I'm on the same page. Because, well, there's quite a lot of stuff to do today on the technical side of things. But talking about diamonds, baby, look at that freaking loyalty badge. Oh, that thing is beautiful. Just had to spend a moment there getting myself a tasty beverage to celebrate the bling blings pinned onto my shirt right now, guys. Give me one second while I take a sip of this tea. Mm. There we go. Feeling good, baby. 100 hours. And uh, this is all we've done, really. 
<laughs> I'm so slow in modern. Uh, shall we begin our very quick review of how our power plant functions? Just so that we're all on the same page here. Let's start over here with the diesel generator facility. This is basically, this entire thing here is designed to create energy out of seeds. And the reason that we set this up is because we realized we were getting seeds as a byproduct for the production of grilled cheese sandwiches. So we have got a squeezer over there that makes plant juice out of seeds. We've got a fermenter over here that makes ethanol out of potatoes. Uh, and all of those liquids are sent into the refinery, which makes biodiesel. And that biodiesel is sent into the diesel generator to create RF or to create power. Uh, all of those liquids are stored in tanks above the facility over there. So we can uh, store our excess materials. And uh, we generate about 4,000 RF, I think it is, out of this diesel generator, somewhere around there. And then a vast majority of that power is used to power these machines. And it's used inside of this shack over here, which is the shack that we are using to produce potatoes and wheat and seeds for that power plant over there, as well as for this section of the power plant, which is going to be producing the grilled cheese factory or the grilled cheeses rather, which we are eventually going to be uh, using in culinary generators to produce the bulk of our power here uh, in the big cheese power facility. In here, we've got a whole bunch of things called garden cloches. They are receiving water from a pump, which is sucking uh, water from uh, a sink over there, which is in fact an infinite water source. That water is getting sent into the back of the cloches. They are getting power from the cables above. That cable is running from the diesel generator um, facility. And uh, that's powering up the gardens. And the gardens, as you can see, are producing wheat and potatoes. And I absolutely love these things, man. Look at this. Uh, they actually grow in unison also, which is pretty sweet. So they all sort of mature at the same time, the potatoes and the wheat. And then we can see the products coming down these pipes. These are item ducts from Thermal Dynamics. And uh, that is a seed and a wheat going down underground. Down here is where it gets a little bit more complicated. <laughs> We can see all of the goods here traveling into a single chest uh, via the item ducts. This chest is the gathering point for the potatoes, the seeds, and the wheat. Then, using Ender IO cables or Ender IO uh, item conduits, we are sending potatoes and seeds into the uh, diesel generator facility over there. And then, uh, using another cable here, we are going to be sending the wheat into uh, the facility that is going to be creating the grilled cheese sandwiches, right? So let's pop up back here. By the way, the staff are traveling, very useful item. You can actually pop through blocks of one block thickness. And uh, in fact, uh, it's actually kind of useful to teleport yourself through walls and stuff I've discovered recently. Very, very nice. Also, is my audio up? Yeah, it's 100%, good stuff. Uh, so that leads us on to the next step for this giant facility. <laughs> <laughs> which is this thing over here, which I have begun setting up off camera. And uh, this is what we're going to be working on together today, my friends. It's going to be pretty freaking awesome if we can get this thing set up. Basically, I have moved our grilled cheese factory that we created over at the Ren Cave into this particular facility over here. I've run some power from the pylon, and uh, I've already started to set up a couple of things over here. Let's just get rid of these blocks so we can expose exactly what's going on here, okay? So, starting with a sag mill over here from Ender.io. This is a, a, a full sag mill that I've created. Uh, was able to do this because of the ender pearls and all the sweet jazz that I've managed to get over the last few episodes. So this is a, a functioning uh, sag mill. And what this sag mill is doing is it is sag milling wheat. And the byproduct of sag milling wheat, of course, is flour and seeds. And those flour and seeds are going to be used uh, for two things. Firstly, the flour is going to be used to make toast so that we can make our grilled cheese sandwiches. Because remember, uh, the, the recipe for a grilled grilled cheese sandwich is toast, butter, and cheese. And to make toast, of course, we need to um, cook down bread. And to make bread, we need to cook down flour, right? So uh, that sagmal is making uh, frickin' flour and seeds. The seeds are going to be sent into the squeezer over there, but the flour is going to be sent into this thing over here, which is an alloy smelter from Ender.io. And that alloy smelter is cooking the flour into bread, which is being stored in this storage crate. And uh, that bread we are then going to be sending
getting into our production facility over here uh, to generate the freaking toast, uh, or the, should I say the grilled cheese at the very end of this process, right? So that's kind of where we're at right now. Now, we're going to be using some really interesting blocks today, my dudes. Lots of you guys have been telling me in the comments about the conveyor belt from Immersive Engineering, and this is a pretty ridiculously awesome block. Let me get rid of, of this chisel and bits over here and show you exactly how this thing works. It basically is a item pipe. So this, this thing will transport items out of either a chest block or uh, lots of different air, uh, cable blocks, right? In this case, we're using an item conduit uh, from Ender.io just because it is the most efficient uh, pipe for transporting items. And as you can see, the, uh, <laughs> the conveyor belt actually connects up to the item conduit. And uh, we set the end of this item conduit to insert. So it's going to be spitting items into this thing. Now check this out. If we turn this on, uh, which it is on right now, but I think what isn't on right now? Oh, this isn't on. If we turn on the sag mill, right, always active, we can see the seeds and the flour getting produced in the sag mill. And Look at that. We can see those beautiful, beautiful items traveling along the conveyor belt. How freaking sweet is that? This is just a chisel and bits panel over here, by the way, made out of a factory block. And uh, look how cool that is. We can see the items traveling along uh, from the sag mill into uh, this storage facility over here, or this small storage crate, which is then sorting out the two different products, right? So we've got the flour going up into the alloy smelter here via this hardened servo. And... Uh, uh, this has been set to a, a whitelist for flour. So this is going to be sending flour only into the alloy smelter above. And to make a hardened servo, of course, is pretty easy. Uh, all you need is some invar ingots, some glass, some iron nuggets, and some redstone. To make invar, of course, you need to smelt down um, some nickel and some iron in the alloy smelter. We've made a couple of these things in the series so far, so that's all good. Now, these item conduits, or these item ducts, should I say, fr from Thermal Dynamics, we set up last episode for these uh, garden. Uh, caches, caches, whatever. Um, and I wanted to use them in this part of the factory because I love seeing items tra traveling in modded. It's one of my favorite things to see, which is why I'm super excited about these uh, conveyor belts. And uh, what I would like to do here, dudes, is get an entire conveyor belt system going inside of this grilled cheese factory, which is going to be absolutely amazing. So let's begin right here, right? What we still need to do now is send the bread that is being produced by this alloy smelter into uh, one well, this chest over here, right? Well, actually, we need to send the bread into another smelting facility, don't we? Because the bread needs to get cooked into toast. I kind of forgot that step. So, hmm, we're probably going to have to set up another toasting position Probably around here somewhere, I guess. Okay, we won't start with that right away. Let's start off with the easy stuff, right? We are making butter and cheese in this factory, just like we did in the original grilled cheese factory. And we're going to need to get salt into both of these autocrafters, right? We need salt here to make the butter. And we need salt here to make the cheese. Now, check this out. I have created a little bit of a facility over here. I've been working a little bit with these panels to try and cover it up. I've got our a beautiful salt production facility over here, hidden behind these panels. There it is. We've got quad mechanical users milking a sink and creating salt in the auto crafters. And that salt is getting stored up here in the storage crate, right? And I actually have a, a, a lever here that'll turn it on via redstone conduit. Uh, so there we go. You can hear all the mechanical users get turned on when we flick the switch. We've got more than enough salt, though, so we don't need to do any of that jazz. I do need to get myself some uh, some blocks here, though, <laughs> that I can use to climb up this jazz. Oh, my goodness, guys. This this has been such an incredible project for me. I've been enjoying it so much. That's why I've, I've dropped 100 hours into it so far. I'm having so much fun in this series. It's unbelievable. Uh, now, check it out. The idea that I've done over here in this base is to try and create some platforms upon which we are going to be transporting all of the items for our grilled cheese factory, right? So we've got a couple of like conveyor belts. Uh, what are these things called? I, I guess they're kind of like L rails, I suppose. This rail is going to be bringing us uh, milk from the cow over there for our grilled cheese. And this one is going to be bringing us uh, the salt, right? So let's start laying down some of these conveyor belts. Uh, for some reason, I can't lay this one down. Oh, there I can. Okay, there we go. So we can see the item conduit uh, from 
renderer like automatically connects to this thing, right? So we're going to change that to insert only. And when we turn this on, it'll start inserting uh, the salt into the conveyor belt. And all we need to do now is lay these conveyor belts down across this railing. And uh, this is going to sort of drop down onto this one. And we can kind of follow the route of the salt over here, right? This salt, of course, is... Oh, jeez. Can I do this properly, please? It's kind of difficult to place these things correctly when you're moving <laughs> along these rails like this. Um, now, one of the difficult things about this particular factory is that we have two mechanical crafters that need salt, right? We need salt for the butter and we need salt uh, for the uh, the cheese. <laughs> I just got distracted there. Oh, I just passed straight through the electrical cabling. My brain literally got shocked there, dudes. Uh, that explains quite a lot, actually. Now, the cool thing about conveyor belts is that they will send items directly into chests. You don't have to have uh, any sort of a connector. Check this out. That conveyor belt will push that item directly into the small storage crate. It'll do the same for chests or any storage things. And let's just make sure that that, uh, that Ender IO conduit isn't connected there. So we're going to be storing the salt and, in fact, the uh, fresh milk here from the milk factory in this small crate, right? Now, the reason that I have used Ender IO cables here instead of, say, for example, these, these item ducts, uh, which actually suit the build much more, is that we can set this to round robin, which means we can, we can equally send salt to this storage crate and this storage crate, and we need to make sure that we, we spread the salt evenly between the two factories over there, right? One of the really difficult things about this particular build, let's actually get this thing running here. Uh, it'll start sending fresh milk also. So, uh, I think, yeah, we have to change this to insert too. Uh, one of the most difficult things that I've found with this particular project or, or the Big Cheese Power Plant project is that I'm trying to make sure that everything we build here falls in line with the aesthetics of the immersive engineering mod because I really love that. I think this fits into our biome so nicely, right? Especially with these cables and stuff. And uh, these Ender IO cables, of course, don't fit in at all. So we're going to have to find some clever way to hide these cables or make them look like they're a part of this factory. But we'll figure that out at some other point. I want to get the mechanics of this thing going. Uh, okay, so we got some fresh milk uh, ending up in both of these small storage crates. Excellent. And of course, we have set this thing to round robin, right? Let's just make 100% sure. Oh, geez. Uh, let's just go up here. This has been set to round robin. Excellent. Okay, so when we get the salt going now, let's just go back to this factory over here, the salt factory. When we get the salt going, that salt should be ending up uh, evenly distributed amongst those two things. So round robin enabled, and let's do always active, and uh, we're in the way here. There we can see the salt <laughs> traveling along the conveyor belts. How freaking sweet is that, dudes? Oh my goodness, this project makes me so excited. Oh, look at that, man. The salt is traveling, uh, and that should be ending up in that storage uh, um, container over there. Beautiful. And uh, we should see the salt evenly distributed, or at least as evenly as possible, I suppose. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's pretty evenly distributed there. Brilliant. So, uh, that's the salt going in. Now, I guess what we got to do is get the fresh milk going in also right so we got to go up here and do the same thing uh, for the fresh milk and this is a fresh milk little factory that I've got over here right so the mechanical user milks the cow uh, and then it sends the the milk into this auto crafter which makes the fresh milk sends the bucket back and it is an infinite loop and then of course this ender IO cable sucks that fresh milk out via a filter uh, a fresh milk filter over here and get stored up here. So the last thing that we need to do to get this thing running, of course, is to set up another conveyor belt system that is going to be transporting the uh, milk into the grilled cheese factory. And uh, there we go. How do we actually, how do we do like a corner like this? Let's check it out. Uh, is that going to work? Yeah, that looks like it's going to work. Sweet. So the milk's going to be traveling along this way. And the way that I've set up the railing system is that the milk should join the salt at this position. Yeah, it's just going to drop off the edge here and uh, join the salt conveyor belt. Oh my goodness, this is really difficult to run against the conveyor belt over here. Uh, let's get this fired up and see if that's actually going to work. Okay, here we go. Uh, let's get this bad boy fired up. Always active. We should see the... And this one needs to be insert. There we go. And we should see the fresh milk going out now. Beautiful. There it travels along the conveyor belt railway line. Oh, this is... This is magic, my dudes. This is... I, I am smiling so hard right now that it actually hurts. <laughs> and there the milk drops down onto the salt conveyor belt. It joins the salt absolutely perfectly in a, in a little stack of salt and fresh milk. Look at that. That is so sweet. And uh, that's going to be ending up in that storage container. And now we should be getting fresh milk and salt. Uh, in these containers. It looks like it's not 
Oh, is that? It's going through the salt first, it looks like it. We might have to add a speed upgrade to that Ender IO conduit over there because it doesn't get through the salt quick enough, it looks like it. Uh, anyway, that's just small tweaks that we can make to the factory a little bit later on. But that's cooking with gas now, baby. That is absolutely epic. Um, I guess next step is to install another uh, alloy smelter over here to cook the bread into toast, right? That's probably going to be what we need to do over here. Uh, Iskal got the Escalium loyalty medal? Jeez! That's 85 hours! I didn't get that one! Nice! Ding! <laughs> How comes I didn't get that one? That was... That's weird I didn't get the Escalium one. That makes me really sad, actually. Uh, shall we just use this alloy smelter for now? I'll remake this one uh, for our little workshop at some other point. Man, I'm just so excited about getting our factory up and running here. I want to get this thing plugged in. Uh, all right, so this is going to get plugged in over here, I suppose. And I think I've set this up for bread. Yes, I have. Now, the question is... Here comes the bread. The question is, can we set up... Uh, can we set up these conveyor belts to suck out of... Uh, an alloy smelter over here. Let's have a look. If we put this to push, yes, that'll send the bread out. Oh, that is amazing. All right, so let's, we'll configure that to push once this has been connected. And uh, this bread is going to be traveling. Well, this is going to be toast, right? This is going to travel all the way to the end uh, of the factory over here. And let's make sure that we disconnect these things too. So that they don't actually connect with each other over here. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. I can't even, I'm stuck on the freaking conveyor belt right now. Hold on, let's get off it. There we go. And uh, let's finish off this line, right? So this is going to travel all the way into this chest. And this is going to be the everything chest, okay? This is where we're going to be uh, storing up the toast. We're going to be storing up the butter. We're going to be storing up the cheese. And that's what's going to create the grilled cheeses in the end. Uh, so that should now be set up, right? So if we fire up this little bad boy over here. Uh, let's set this up to uh, push. Hey, Gocky! <laughs> What's happening, my dude? Uh, that should be working, except it's not quite working over here, which means we need to dig into our bags over here to find our engineer's hammer. My goodness, Matt, the, this inventory right now. And uh, we need to change the direction of this. Um, will that work? There we go. Okay, so we just needed to configure the conveyor belt correctly, and that should be sending the toast now. Uh, three by three, it looks like it, from the alloy smelter. And that's because it's got a double-layered capacitor here. We probably need to upgrade that into an octatic capacitor, just to make sure this factory is pumping at full freaking blast right now. Let's go get an octatic capacitor from. Do I have one in one of these things? Uh, they're all double-layered. Oh, here's an octatic. We kind of taken apart our uh, <laughs> our factory over here, but that's fine. That is all good, man. The, the 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 goal for today is to get this thing fired up, right? So let's get the octatic capacitor in there. That should start pumping out that toast. Nice. All right. So the toast is getting cooked up like nobody's business. Um, that's a lot of toast to get made there. And look at all them goods floating through here, dudes. That is so freaking sweet. Uh, next up, what we're gonna do, I think, is try and get the what is this? The the cheese created. So I guess all we got to do for this is to move down fresh milk and uh, salt into this thing. And I guess we probably have to find a clever way to do this because as we can see from this Ender IO connection, it's actually not sending the salt and the fresh milk at the same time. It's sort of sending them one at a time. So, hmm, we might have to get a little bit sneaky with this one. All right, I think I got a plan here, my dudes. What we're gonna do is we are going to insert two outputs into the small storage crate. One output will be for fresh milk and one output will be for salt. And that should evenly remove salt and fresh milk at the same time from this thing, right? So let's add a hardened servo to this thing and uh, let's add fresh milk to this one. And then I guess we'll add the next one on this side. And yeah, that's going to look really sweet actually, right? Because we want to see the products coming down here. Um, we don't want to mess up the top of the auto crafting table though. I really like seeing what it's making over there. I think that looks really, really cool. So in this servo, we're going to be whitelisting salt. This one is going to whitelist fresh milk. Excellent. And then we'll run a pipe like this into the mechanical crafter. This will come down like so. And that should be sucking out when we turn these, ba these bad boys on, right? There we go. Uh, 
That's going to suck out 16 at a time, uh, which maybe we'll do what, like, like one at a time, maybe, to make it look cooler. So it's just like one at a time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll change this to one at a time so we can see them flowing down the item pipe. There we go. Absolutely beautiful. And now the real question is if this conveyor belt is going to suck out um, the... Oh, I know what we need to do here, right? We're going to need to set up another um, item conduit here or an item duct here with the servo and a whitelist. And we're gonna have to, I think we're going to have to set up a blacklist for this one. So we don't want them to be taking out the pot. We don't want it to take out the salt or the fresh uh, milk over here, right? So blacklist, no to salt, no to fresh milk, no to pot. Those are going to stay in the mechanical user. And that means the only thing that will get sucked out by this item duct is the cheese, right? And as I understand it, we probably could connect the conveyor belts like that. And then we'll probably need to just rework this one slightly. No, nope, that doesn't quite work. It needs to go in that direction. There we go. That probably works just fine. And then when we turn this one on, we should see cheese coming out of here eventually. Yeah, there we go. So <laughs> there goes one stack of cheese, or at least uh, I think it's a, a stack of 16 cheesies heading into uh, the small storage crate. Very good. Uh, what's happened to our toast supply over there? I, I'm not seeing any toast coming out of here. What's What's going down? Oh, we've run out of power over here? Oh, of course. We don't actually have uh, electricity connected up to uh, this alloy smelter right now. So that's a little bit of a, a problemo, isn't it? Hmm. Uh, I guess the only way we could probably do this um, is by using an Ender IO energy conduit from there down to there, I guess. All right, so we could do this in a super janky way, which is probably not really that bad. I guess we could run the cabling uh, like a so, right? So we'll run it down like this and then pull it down like that. And that should be giving power uh, into our, um, our alloy smelter over here. Let's just set the output correctly over here. So this side needs to be uh, out output over there there we go and that should connect up yeah there we go so now we're getting a little bit of power over there we can also disconnect this one that one doesn't need to be connected and yeah it's not exactly a beautiful but it'll it'll do and i like seeing the uh, the amount of power on the face of that um that capacitor bank over there because that's storing a little bit of backup energy for us for these machines right so there we go nice the uh, the alloy smelters back up and running making the toast and there comes the cheese into the system a beautiful <laughs> this is so awesome uh, now next up of course we need to make uh the heavy cream to make the butter because to make butter we need heavy cream and salt right so i guess it's probably going to be the same sort of setup over here where we will suck out the uh what is what is in here yeah this we're gonna need two things again right so we're gonna need an output here for salt an output here for fresh milk and then we can run those item ducts all the way down to this position that's going to go into the mechanical crafter this one can come all the way down to the like the the workbench i guess is kind of what it is right and that's going to send it in there then with our hardened servos we will need to whitelist salt and fresh milk once again so this one will be salt and that's going to be whitelist let's turn it on change it to one item at a time so we can see them traveling down beautiful and let's do exactly the same on this one but this one's going to be fresh milk whitelisted to one item at a time let's turn that sucker full on and that should be sucking out the the yeah there we go fresh milk's coming out beautiful that's making uh well it will be making cream in a in a short second when the milk starts to arrive so in the meantime let's get this set up right same sort of idea uh we need to blacklist this time salt fresh milk and the mixing bowl this time right so let's blacklist that bad those bad boys mixing bowl salt fresh milk so those won't get taken out of the mechanical crafter uh, the only thing that, that will get taken out is the heavy freaking uh, cream once we turn this bad boy on and we're going to get another conveyor belt going into this mechanical crafter which is going to be making <laughs> the um the butter. Now, uh, by the way, one last step here that I didn't tell you about. This recipe also requires salt, right? So we actually need to be sending salt to three locations. One for the butter, 
Uh, and one... Oh, wait a minute. I think I've messed this up. I have messed this up. This doesn't need salt. No, this one actually doesn't need salt at all. Uh, which I don't know why I thought it needed salt. Uh, hang on. So, in that case, what we can do up here is we can add a filter to stop salt coming into here, right? And I need to get myself an Ender IO filter. Give me one second here. Okay, so we don't want salt going into our heavy cream factory. So we're going to add a basic item filter from Ender IO here. And uh, we are going to blacklist salt, right? So we're not allowed to send salt in this way. Uh, so that node is not going to send salt in this direction. However, it is going to send salt into that one. And it's going to send salt into this one via an Ender IO cable that I've run under the ground here and this Ender IO cable goes into uh, this auto crafter for salt. So that node up there is using round robin to supply salt to that storage crate and this mechanical crafter over here right now this thing is going to make the butter which means we need to have one more uh, blacklisted item servo over here right so one more blacklisted item servo uh, is going to be going over here and we could probably just connect this one up uh, to that storage crate yeah that probably makes the most sense and uh, let's make this a blacklist for the saucepan and salt and heavy cream right we also need a blacklist for the heavy cream over here uh no do we yeah we do <laughs> Jeez, dudes this is this is such a complicated factory when you try and lay it out in a really cool looking way it just gets so freaking complicated all right there's the heavy cream that's not allowed to go through so this is only going to send uh butter right into uh this storage crate over here so if we turn that bad boy on let's turn this to one just like all the others so we can see those items traveling through there quite nicely and then let's turn this one to one also and turn that bad boy on boom so we should be seeing the, the heavy cream coming out of here in a second uh there we go heavy cream is coming out of there onto that conveyor belt that's going into the auto crafter beautiful making a bunch of butter over here we've got way too much salt up in here though don't we we should probably move a little bit of the salt out of here actually uh just to give the whole system a little bit more space uh, but yeah, that heavy cream is now heading off into this chest, which has got everything that we need in it to make grilled cheese sandwiches, except for chiseled metal factory blocks, which we need to take care of at some point. Uh, can I access this thing? Oh, jeez. <laughs> we, we need to add some sort of railing and stuff here, too, so we don't pick up the items as we travel through the factory, uh, across the, tr the factory floor, right? Uh, but there we go. So this is receiving all of the goods for the crafting of uh, the grilled cheese. So I guess the last remaining thing that we need to do here is uh, send through via a blacklist on an item servo the toast, the butter, and the cheese for the grilled cheese sandwiches, right? That's going to be heading into this auto crafter and uh, that's going to make ourselves the grilled cheese sandwiches. So let's get that blacklisted. Oops, uh, there we go. Inventory is getting an absolute nightmare right now, but it's fine. We're plugging on butter, cheese, and toast whitelisted. That's the only stuff we want to send through here one at a time. Or maybe we should do stacks of this one, actually. And uh, let's turn that bad boy on and let's have a look. Is that going to start pumping what we need? There we go. Oh, beautiful, baby. We should see the material starting to land up in the final step of our project a beautiful stuff man is everything else working I, I think we need to turn on yeah let's let's get the whole system cranking right now because it looks like not everything is working right let's turn on our milk factory a uh, boom baby let's turn on our salt factory a uh, boom baby and now we can sit back relax and watch our factory at work maybe we try get a little bit of height here just to see what is actually going on um, yeah, look at that, my dudes. Maybe we try to get a little bit more height here on top of the diesel power jet. Ready to try not to touch anything. That doesn't really give us a great view. Let's get back on top of the roof here. This is probably the, the best view. And maybe we can make ourselves a little... A little platform to view from right let's just try land on there there we go nice let's have a look at this oh look at this glorious joy my dudes this is so freaking sweet so we got the milk coming from the eternally milked cow the salt coming from the salt factory 
all of that sweet jazz is heading into a central storage facility which is sorting the salt and the milk between two other facilities. One is making butter, one is making cheese on this side, uh, the, and one is making heavy cream. The heavy cream gets used to make the butter uh, and the cheese just gets created on that side. All of those goods are then sent via conveyor belts and item ducts into a final storage facility that sends all of the ingredients into a final place for the production of the grilled cheese sandwich. And that, my friends, is the Big Cheese Power Plant Grilled Cheese Facility up and running. <laughs> My goodness, what a ridiculously complicated way to generate power, guys. It was probably a much easier way to do this, but I think you'll agree. This is super cool. We've only got one more thing to install in Big Cheese Power, and that is, of course, a giant culinary de generator array uh, that is going to be producing power out of all the grilled cheese that we're making. Uh, but that, my dudes, I think is going to do it for today. <laughs> My brain is absolutely cooked right now. I am so freaking proud of this factory though. It is so sweet. I mean, look at this. This is so epic. I just love seeing all of this stuff just traveling along. I think I'm going to add some more of these sort of glass tube things. I think that looks really cool, right? For some reason, this has stopped running too. Oh, that's because I think we're not producing any wheat over here. Have we run out of juice? Are we out of power right now? I think we might literally be out of power right now. Is this thing on? Uh, no, it's not on. Okay, let's crank on the diesel generator. There we go. Let's get this thing fired up, my dudes. We set it up. Let's get it working. Okay, so uh, I think that's been... I've been storing up a whole bunch of diesel um, for storage. Yeah, we have a full tank of diesel up there. So we can power on the diesel generator. I'm not entirely sure exactly how much RF this thing creates. Can we actually see up here? Um, I think we can see. I was about to say goodbye, but I'm super excited about this. Let's get our system up and running. Uh, it makes about 4,000 RF, the diesel generator, right? So that's pretty decent. Pretty decent uh, production there of, of electricity. That should now be powering up our garden cloche facility, our hydroponic shack. And uh, we should see these things growing. There we go. And we'll see a bunch of wheat coming out of here in a second. Bunch of potatoes too. There goes the wheat down into the system. And now we should see some stuff happening. Yeah, there we go. There is the flour and the seeds going in here. Bread is coming in here. Toast is getting created in here. Seeds going back into uh, uh, the production of plant oil and whatnot. And that is our entire system up and running. I am super happy, guys. Ridiculously happy. This is so freaking sweet. I don't even know what to say. Thank you so much for watching today's episode, guys. If you enjoyed it and you approve of this ridiculously complicated way to make power in modern Minecraft, hit me up with the like button, baby, and jingle jangle that notification bell so that if you are subscribed, um, you get a notification when we go live with a new video on the Ren Diggity Dog channel. If you're not subscribed yet, I don't know what you're doing, man. I'm going to shove this grilled cheese sandwich directly up the crack of your ass. Hit the freaking subscribe button. <laughs> oh, man. Thanks so much for watching, guys. This has been Ren Diggity Dog melting my own brain here in modern Minecraft. We'll smell you all in the next cheesy grilled cheese episode. <laughs>